Yeah, so the I think at this point, the most important things that parents can do to protect children who are too young to be vaccinated is have them wear masks when they're in a public space, and that includes at school. And of course, we have a school mandate and a public space mandate, and masks are extremely effective at preventing uh, transmission and infection with the COVID-19. So um, that's the number one priority. Of course, good hand washing is also helpful. That adds additional benefit, uh, but by itself, it's clearly not enough. The masks are, are the way to go. Right. So the current age of the vaccines are available is for children age 12 and up. So the Pfizer vaccine is still uh, available under emergency use authorization from age 12 to 16. And then the 17 and above uh, is, is fully approved uh, by the FDA for the Pfizer vaccine. And um, yeah, so at, at this point in time, I've I've gotten questions from parents and concern about this Delta variant and and um, how you know right now one third of all new cases in Louisiana in the past week have been in children less than age 18, many of whom, as we said, can't be vaccinated. So uh, on the other hand, wearing masks in school is is very very effective, and we know these mitigation strategies work. They worked last year. They still work. And even for those kids who are unable to be vaccinated, it is safe for them to go to school as long as they're wearing a mask and following the school procedures and mitigation strategies are in place. Right, so the antibody preparations are being used in children. They're available um, down to even very young children, um, mostly in the hospital setting. So that's in kids who have other immune compromised. You might have a child who's had a heart transplant or a kidney transplant or a child who's who's getting chemotherapy for childhood cancer, those kind of things. In the high risk situations, uh, children are being uh, treated with monoclonal antibody therapies. For the vast majority of kids, the COVID-19 infection will be a mild uh, to moderate level of infection, much like you know a bad case of the flu. Um, and and won't need any specific treatment like monoclonal antibodies. So if your child tests positive for COVID, uh, the first question and, and what your doctor will ask is, you know, are they having symptoms or not? And if they're not having symptoms, then they still need to quarantine because they can still transmit virus to other people, but quarantine is important in that case. Um, if they are having symptoms, the what the parents should be looking at is is are those symptoms just mild you know a little bit of fever even even a lot of fever might even be 102 degrees for for a few days that's not necessarily you know in itself problematic fever doesn't hurt your child it makes them feel a little miserable like all of us but it's okay to treat with tylenol or ibuprofen and they're going to have no nasal congestion and cough uh typically with covid and that just has to run its course and and uh, will do so without complication for the vast majority of people when to be concerned is if your child is having trouble breathing is breathing really fast is coughing a lot uh, and, and to the point where they just seem that they can't catch their breath. Or especially for a young child, they're feeling they're ill such that, you know, they're not taking in enough fluids. The kids, like adults, don't eat a whole lot when they're sick, but as long as they're taking in fluids, that's okay. And we want to make sure their fluid intake is good. One thing I get a lot of questions about is when is vaccine going to be available for younger kids, younger than age 12? And those studies are still ongoing. Uh, we have enrolled locally over 45 children in that study, and, and the worldwide goal is 4,500 children in the 5 to 11-year-old age group. In the less than four age group, the two to four a two to four year old group has already closed to enrollment, but we're still enrolling infants in the six month to two year old age range. There are some spots available in that study. Um, the timing of when those vaccines may be approved for younger kids is likely Thanksgiving, Christmas for the five to 11 year old age group and well after the new year for uh, kids less than age five. 
if you, there is a child at home, particularly a, a young infant, it's important that the adults who are around that young infant be vaccinated. And that's part of why schools are looking at whether uh, teachers should be required to be vaccinated when they're eligible and the same in daycare centers and the like, because uh, kids, uh, while kids can transmit to each other, uh, one way to protect children is surround them by adults who are vaccinated. And, uh, and especially in a household with a young infant, that's very highly recommended. 